Norman the Doorman by Don Freeman. In front of a small, well-hidden hole, around and back of the majestic Museum of Art, there once stood a mouse named Norman. Norman was a doorman, and he greeted all the art-loving creatures who came to see the treasures which were kept in the basement of the museum. Come right in, Norman would say to his cousins. We're quite safe. I've sprung all the traps. Norman would explain every painting in detail and handle each masterpiece which as much, with as much care and respect as if he had painted it himself. He would also take great pride in pointing out the artistic features of certain pieces of Greek sculpture, which rested in the dark corners of the storage room. Norman's only worry was keeping out of a single sharp-eyed upstairs guard who often came to the basement to set traps for mice. His bright flashlight frightened the visitors and they dashed out of the secret door into a hole into the night like streaks of pink and white lightning. As for Norman, he always managed to escape and hide inside of an old armored knight's helmet up there, he felt perfectly safe. Actually, the helmet was Norman's home, which he had made into a very comfortable and workable studio. Just see what a splendid skylight the visor made. Like most everybody, Norman had a hobby. Each night, after work, he tried to create something pleasing or beautiful, perhaps a painting of Swiss cheese or crackers or a statue. On bitter cold days, Norman decided to stay in his studio and make something out of wire. For some time, he had been collecting mouse traps and old scraps of pictures hanging wire with the intention of putting them to artistic use. The mouse traps weren't any good anymore since Norman had cleverly taken off the piece of cheese and then snapped the tape sh trap shut without having harmed even so much as a whisker on his nose. All through the day and far into the night, Norman twisted the bent wires into many strange and mysterious shapes until at last he had created something he was really proud of. It looked for all the world like a mouse on a trapeze. That night when he finally went to sleep, he was a tired but very happy mouse. Early in the morning when Norman went outside to shovel away the snow in front of the doorway, he noticed a man reading a sign nearby. Sculpture contest open to all artists, great and small. Prizes, prizes. Works in stone, iron, bronze, wood, or wire, welcome. Last day today. Back he flew. Why can't I show my wire structure, he said, as he slid through the visor lid opening. But what would he call it? All pieces must have titles, he well knew. Suddenly, he had an inspiration. Stripping off the printed word trap from the label and then ripping off the letter E-E-S-E -E -E from the word cheese, he pasted them together. Now he had a fitting title for his wire work, Trap Ease. Although Norman was a modest mouse, he practically burst a button off his coat. Then, as this was the last day for artists to bring their sculpture pieces in, Norman put a cover over his statue, as he had seen the others do, and away he scooted. Up the front stairway he climbed one snowy step, 
at a time. Once inside the huge museum, he eagerly followed the other sculptors from one snow room to another. He still had to be extremely careful of the sharp-eyed guard. Contest or not, he did not want to get caught. After carefully removing the cover from his wire statue, he left it on the floor with the rest of the contestants' work. Just before leaving, however, he took one last look would the judges for the contest notice his trap ease after all? It wasn't very large. Out he went into the snowy afternoon, knowing he had done his best. Back once more in his helmet studio, Norman went about sewing new brass buttons on his new blue coat. You see, he had not forgotten that he was a doorman who had a job to do. Meanwhile, upstairs in the sculpture gallery of the museum, the judges were busy judging. Quickly and ser seriously, they examined each piece, trying to find which ones deserved prizes. Gradually, they found themselves huddled around a certain statue. Now this is an amazing creation, exclaimed one of the judges. There's no name, said another. And isn't it a shame it's so tiny? Yes, but remember, the contest is open to great and small, said another judge. One by one, each guard, when asked if he knew who had brought it in, shook his head and said, no, not I. The museum director couldn't understand why the name of them hadn't caught sight, why none of them hadn't caught sight of the artist. When the sharp-eyed guard took another close look, he gasped. Oh, so this is where all my mouse traps have been going. I think I know where to start looking for the tricky trap snatcher. Without waiting another minute, the guard snapped on his flashlight and hurried downstairs to the basement. What's this? One of my traps? stuck into a night helmet? He lifted up the visor to investigate and there he saw pieces of wire and parts of traps and strangest of all, a neat straw bed which could only belong to a mouse. Wherever he is, he must be mighty, mighty fond of my cheese, said the guard as he knelt down on the floor and painted the flash, pointed the flashlight at some tracks which led out through a hole in the wall. During all this time, Norman had been tending to his duty as doorman. A party of mice from the country, far from for whom he had been waiting, was long past due, and he was getting mighty cold and hungry. But to his surprise, what should be coming around the corner but the sharp-eyed guard? Oh, so there you are, said the guard, as Norman fled inside. But when the guard held a piece of cheese just above the hole and Norman sniffed it, he couldn't help poking his nose out to get a better whiff. And just as he was about to reach up and snatch the cheese, a hand came down swiftly and caught Norman by the tail. Say, are you the rascal who's been taking my mouse traps every day and use, using them for artistic purposes? said the guard sternly. It's just a hobby, said Norman. Just my hobby. Right then and there, the guard tossed Norman up on his shoulders, but he still kept a tight hold of his tail. Norman was sure he was being taken to jail. You can imagine his surprise when instead they entered the museum and heard the artists all clapping and cheering. Hooray for trapeze, they shouted. Hooray for trapeze. Well, I'll be bamboozled, cried the guard. I do believe you've won a prize, and they're waiting for you to come forward and receive the reward. The guard rushed up to the judge's platform and proudly said, 
Here's the winner. I found him freezing outdoors in the snow. Oh, indeed, said the head judge, somewhat flustered. Why, yes, who else could have created the charming young mouse on the flying trapeze? What is your name, good fellow, and what would you like for your prize? If you please, my name is Norman. I'm the doorman downstairs, and I've always dreamed of seeing the upstairs part of the museum without getting caught. That is what I would like best. The simple request was granted immediately. Amid great applause, the guard led Norman out into the hall, where together they began a grand tour of the entire museum. Later that night, when Norman returned to his door downstairs, he found his mice friends from the country waiting for him there. Of course, Norman invited them into his studio, where he shared with them an enormous slice of cheddar cheese a present given him by the kind-hearted guard. Oh, what a wonderful day. Way to end the day. Good night. Night for a night.